Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship here at Riviera Presbyterian Church. My name is Reverend Melanie Marsh, and I am the pastor here at Riviera. And whether you are visiting us for the first time today, whether you've known about our congregation for years and are just checking us out, or whether you have been here and been a part of our community for all of your life long, our worship today is different and special because you are here. And we could not do any of this without you. You have joined us on a wonderful day, this first day of, this first Sunday of April, because it is the beginning of our season of creation here at the church. We are an earth care congregation at Riviera, and that means that we have a particular commitment to caring for creation in all of its living things. And this next season of the church, we are going to be celebrating that commitment and that connection. Today, we are celebrating the people of creation, and we are doing that in a couple of different ways. We have a performance by our wonderful preschool butterfly choir led by our music director, Dr. Walter Bussey. We will be celebrating the sacrifice sacrament of communion this morning, and all are welcome to take part in that sacrament, whether you are a member of our church or not. And we are holding a community meal for everybody who is here and any neighbors and friends right after worship. So don't go anywhere. We will be joining together in our fellowship hall right next door at worship, I mean, right after worship for a potluck. So it is a beautiful day to gather together and worship God. Now, in the season of creation, one of the markers of the season is that we are guided by gratitude. And so every single week, we are going to open our service in the same way. You can see in your worship bulletin that we have a special um, call to worship for this season called the words spoken before all others. In the native Haudenosaunee language, this worship um, call to worship is called the Ohenten Kariwatenquen, which it translates to the words spoken before all others. Oftentimes at community gatherings or sacred times for the Haudenosaunee nation, they say this address, which in its entirety is a lot longer than what we're gonna be saying in worship every Sunday, but I invite you to look it up, find it and read it in its entirety because it is beautiful and inspiring. So it gives thanks to all of the various elements of living and non-living things that create our community of creation. And each week we will say the same words. The leader will lead us through a series of gratitudes and the people will respond saying their own gratitude and then saying together, now our minds are one. As we do this greeting and gratitude every single week, I invite you to consider and meditate on the things in the natural world that you are grateful for, the people in your lives, the land that you live upon, the animals and plants, the air that we breathe, and the waters that surround us. Let us open our hearts and our minds for worship this morning by saying together the words spoken before all others. Today, we are gathered and called to live in balance and harmony with each other and all living things. So now we bring our minds together as one as we give greetings and thanks to each other as people. Let us give thanks for each other. Now our minds are one. We greet our mother, the earth, for she gives us all that we need for life. She supports our feet as we walk about upon her, and she continues to care for us as she has from the beginning of time. To our mother, we give thanks. Let us give thanks for Mother Earth. Now our minds are one. We send greetings and thanks to the animal life of creation. They have made things to teach us as people. We are honored by them when they give up their lives so that we may use their bodies for food for our people. We are glad that they are still here and we hope that they will always be so. Let us give thanks for our fellow creatures. Now our minds are one. We give thanks to all the waters of the world for quenching our thirst and providing us with strength. Water is life, and we honor its power in every form. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to the spirit of the water. Let us give thanks to the waters. Now our minds are one. We are thankful for the powers of the four winds, 
when we hear their voices in the moving air as they refresh us and purify the air we breathe. They help us to bring the change of seasons, and with one mind we give our thanks to the four winds. Let us give thanks to the four winds. Now our minds are one. We turn our thoughts to the Creator and send greetings and thanks for all the gifts of creation. Everything we need to live a good life is here. For all the love that is around us, we gather our minds together as one and send the gratitude of our hearts to the Creator. Let us give thanks to God, our Creator. Now our minds are one. Our opening hymn this morning All people that on earth do dwell. Number 385. You can find it in your purple Glory to God hymnal that is right in the seat of the, the back of the seat in front of you. Let us stand together as in body or in spirit as we are able and join in singing. When we fail in our calling to live as Christ teaches, when we forget that we belong to each other and to God, when we misuse our power as caretakers of God's creation, God is right here with us. Even now, God is ready to forgive when we forget, confess our sins. Let us pray together the unison prayer of confession. Our God, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, you place us in your creation and you command us to care for it. Your works declare glory and splendor, and you call us to praise and reverence. Where we have degraded or destroyed Earth's bounty, forgive us. Where we have taken beauty and majesty for granted, have mercy upon us. 
kinds of forgiveness. God's mercy is wider than the oceans, deeper than the depths of the seas. In God's eternal love, you are restored and made whole, cleansed of all wrongdoing. Hear and believe this good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. forgiven people of God, beloved and blessed and part of God's family, we share a sign of Christ's peace with one another in worship every single Sunday. So from wherever you are in the space, whether you are worshiping in person or in online, I encourage you to share a sign of Christ's peace with one another in just a moment. This can look all kinds of ways. It can be a bow, a handshake, a high five, or a hug, or if you're online, it can be a comment or just a greeting to the people that are worshiping around you. May the peace of Christ be with you. And now let us share Christ's peace with one another. seated. And in just a moment, our butterfly choir is going to come forward and sing. But before they do that, I want to invite all of our young worshipers, whether you're singing this morning or not, to come and meet me right here in front of the communion table, where we are going to begin a little field trip. Yeah, you are welcome. Welcome. Indeed. Hello, good morning, you guys. So, oh my gosh, there's so many, come, come. Welcome, welcome. So today is a very special day. It's the start of our season of creation, and I don't know if you noticed, but something magically and mysteriously grew in our sanctuary over this last week. Does anybody see what that thing is in the back right there? What is that? A rainbow tree. It is a rainbow tree. It looks a lot like the rainbow tree that is right outside our sanctuary. And we are going to go walk very carefully and gently and take a little bit closer look at that rainbow tree right now. So can you guys walk with me gently and calmly and slowly? You are amazing. You are doing such a great job. Yes, you are beautiful. And we're going to stand in a little circle right around the rainbow tree because if you notice, all of these little tree leaves and butterflies and birds and flowers, they all have special things written on them. They are hopes and wishes for all of our little ones and their families and some of our church members and their families too for our future together on this earth. Some of them say things like, I hope I get to have a pet. Some of them say things like, I hope to see trees grow big and strong. Some of them say things like, I want to be a princess. But all of them are hopes and dreams and prayers for our family of creation. The people, the animals, the plants, and everything else. It is such a joy to be part of a really big family. And we are all part of that family together in God's love. So can we say a quick prayer here at the rainbow tree? And then we're going to go back to the front for the, for the butterfly choir. Dear God, thank you for your love. Thank you for making us all part of your family. 
Help us to love one another in return. The people, the animals, the plants, and the earth herself. Amen. All right, you guys did such a great job of walking this way. Can you join in a line again together and walk together to the front? I'll hold your hand. Oh, you're doing great. You are doing so great. And I invite our butterfly singers to line up right up here. And everyone else can join their families and sit and listen for the performance to begin. you guys okay there's only three of you left but take a big bow good job 
And now, families, if you are under five, you can follow Miss Simonette to the nursery care area. And if you are five and up, you, I mean over five, you can go back to sit with your families or sit at the table in the back and color on your bulletin. That's right. So you can go with Miss Simonette. That's right. And we'll see you at the end of worship for communion. Join with me in the prayer for illumination. Holy Spirit, open our hearts and our minds that as the words of Scripture are read, we might be transformed. Through our transformation, may you guide us. And as you guide us, may we work together to change the world. Amen. Our Scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 8. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens, and out of the mouths of babes and infants you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens and the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you might care for them. Yet you have made them a little bit lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given us dominion of the works of your hand. You have put all things under our feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All flourishing is mutual. Robin Wall Kimmerer, Braiding Sweetgrass. The following story is adapted from an article by Leah Penniman, founder of Soul Fire Farm for Yes Magazine, February 14th, 2019. He sat in the van in the gravel driveway of the farm and refused to get out. The teenager had come from the city to spend a day at Soul Fire Farm in Grafton, New York. Soul Fire is a farming community created by and for and in honor of black and indigenous and other people of color whose mission centers around healing people by healing the earth. Now, the other teens in his program emerged into the chilly fall air just a little bit skeptical, but this particular kid lingered in the van with his hood up, his headphones on, and his eyes averted in a serious side eye. There was no way he was going to get mud on his new Jordans and no way he would soil his hands with the dirty work of farming. Who could blame him? Almost without exception, when African descent visitors of any age came to the farm they, and were asked what their first thoughts were when they saw the soil, they would respond, slavery, plantation, colonization. It's true. There are many of us who have a complicated and even traumatic relationship with the land whose ancestors fled or were forcibly removed from the red clays of Georgia or the dark black mud of Louisiana and Mississippi or the sugar fields and coasts of the Caribbean, and for good reason. The memories of chattel slavery and lynching and theft and genocide are all bound up with our relationship to the earth. 
As the founder and director of the farm, Leah has learned to expect this kind of response. But she's also learned to be patient. She's learned to keep a sense of humor and a sense of wonder. Because the transformation that takes place when we remember our deep connection to creation, to the very ground that we stand upon, the air that we breathe, the plants and animals that feed us, that remembering is worth every bit of discomfort and fear that we have to go through to get there. So it was only when he saw everybody else departing on their tour that this young man's fear of being left alone in a forest full of bears overcame his fear of dirt. And he joined the group removing his Jordans to protect them from the damp and cold earth and allowing at last the soil to make direct contact with the soles of his bare feet. And by the end of that day, this typically stoic and reserved teenager broke into tears during the closing circle. He explained that when he was very young, his grandmother had shown him how to garden and how to gently hold a handful of soil that was teeming with insects. She died years ago, and he had forgotten all of these lessons. When he removed his shoes on the tour and let the mud reach his feet, all of the memories of her and of the land had literally traveled up from the earth through the soles of his feet and right into his heart. He said it felt like he was finally home. Leah Penniman writes that the further the population gets from its connection to Earth, the more likely we are to ignore and exploit those who work on the soil, and even the soil itself. And we see this begin to happen with the humankind as far back as our ancient ancestors in the stories we read from the Bible, usually with disastrous consequences for the earth, for our relationships to one another, and for ourselves. Think Adam and Eve in the garden. Think Noah and the flood and the people of earth at that time. Think Cain and Abel, the brothers who feuded and one ended up murdering the other. All because they had forgotten that we belong to one another. But in the book of Genesis, in the ancient Hebrew story of the beginning, we are reminded that this is not the way it always was. It isn't the way that God intended for things to be. That very first biblical image that we encounter of creation is a garden. It is a place that is teeming with life with water and food, with plants of all kinds. And that very first job that God assigned to human beings was take care of the garden. Tend to it, work it, live with it, watch it grow, help it to thrive. This is how God intended us to live, in partnership with God and with one another for the good of all others, and for our own good as well. But, you see, we are broken and imperfect human beings. And in our brokenness, in our imperfection, humanity has often chosen relationships of dominance, of exploitation and competition. And those who have lived on the receiving end of those traumas like slavery or genocide or displacement, are not the only ones who have suffered when our union with the rest of creation is forgotten. We all begin to lose our humanity and our spirits when we lose sight of that earliest calling from God to be in relationship with the rest of the created world. It's all about finding a balance. And today marks the beginning of a new season in our worshiping community. As we mentioned in our intro this morning, we are now in the season of creation. 
It may not be a season on any traditional liturgical calendar, but it is a very important season for us in this community. Over the next five Sundays, we will honor our connections to the earth and all living, moving, growing, breathing things by digging deep, by asking hard questions, and looking for all of the tangible ways that we can change our own lives to transform our relationship to creation for the better. And as we do this work, we will draw on the work of the ancient Hebrew psalmists in worship, along with the work of many wise modern-day earth keepers and storytellers. One of these voices is that of the quote we heard at the very beginning of this sermon, Robin Wall Kimmerer, whose book Braiding Sweetgrass is a love story to the earth, an elegy and a memory of all the ways that we have forgotten who we are, and it's a pathway into remembering those connections as well. And this will lay the foundation for many of our reflections during this season. In Braiding Sweetgrass, Robin highlights four essential practices that lead to thriving in our life and in relationships. Respect, reciprocity, generosity, and gratitude. Robin observes that often in the Western world, kinship is thought of as only our human relatives. But in many indigenous worldviews, kinship means all living things, from blade of grass to berries, living waters to land. And that is how we will aim to approach the work we do together as we move through the season of creation each week focusing on one of these four practices, respect, reciprocity, generosity, and gratitude. We can be good medicine for the natural world, Robin reminds us. It is possible for us to live in a way that allows all things to thrive if we can remember that we are all a part of creation and that all of creation is also a part of us. It has always been that way. God never meant for us to go it alone. God always intended for us to remember that we are interconnected. Our thriving is dependent on the thriving of everything and everyone around us. And our existence on this earth does not have to be defined by destruction. There is another way. When we seek authentic partnership, when we listen to each other, really listen and seek to learn from one another, when we share the wisdom of our stories, our fears and our struggles, when we approach each other with respect, reciprocity, generosity and gratitude, all of our relationships to our people, to our resources, to our creator, and to all of our non-human kin, all of these connections begin to thrive. So, in this season, may our prayer be one that is grateful. May it be one that leads us to deeper connections. May our days be filled with wonder at all of the gifts creation freely shares with each one of us. May our hearts be led to use those gifts, to pass on those gifts, and to return those gifts in kind with all openness to the earth and to all living things. Amen. Today, as we do every Sunday, we set aside sacred time and space to share with one another the burdens and joys of our life together and of our life outside of this place. And so whatever you have that you are carrying alongside you in this moment, 
I invite you to share it with us so that we might pray with you and for you today, now, and in the week to come. If you have any joys or concerns, please share them with us at this time. I have uh, two. Uh, one's con concern um, for a friend of mine from the zoo who just discovered she has stage two breast cancer. Uh, they are still in the planning stages as what they are going to do, but she definitely needs prayers and, and for her. Um, the other thing is also at the zoo, I just found out that a longtime friend of mine who I used to work with in the zoo kitchen, Freddie Cohen, passed away a couple of weeks ago. And he was a trip, but he was a lot of fun to work with. My sister Eleanor, who lives in the villages, asked for prayers for the family of Bill Smith, who was her neighbor and passed away after a long life. My husband Joey and I were having a very hard time this morning as he's dealing with his cancer. But I have to tell you something. I came here and I listened to you sing and everything went away. You have a voice of an angel. Thank you. Um, th this is definitely a joy. I wanted to say thank you for the beautiful day and for the even more beautiful children who are with us today and express gratitude to the parents or the families that, that brought those children here to be with us. And, and they, have, they have made this a very, very special day. So 30 years ago, there was a terrible genocide that swept the country of Rwanda and over a million people were killed. And I uh, just want prayers for them, for those killed, the ones who survived, and all victims of war. Thank you. I have a joy. I have a friend who had to get um, lung surgery that was kind of a surprise that discovered something and it has recovered really well. And so well, will be able to visit us in Miami in a few weeks. Um, that on Friday, um, our boss and our friend, Eddie, suddenly passed away out of the blue, was found on the floor, um, asked for prayers for his wife, Lourdes, his two daughters and his son, and for those of us who are tutors at this center, we had a very hard Saturday and a very hard week coming up ahead of us because we loved him very much. I want to extend a prayer of gratitude for a few different people in our community today. Um, first, to Ellen and Kathy, without whose help and leadership we would not have our beautiful rainbow tree in the sanctuary today. They worked all week to help put it together. Also for Diana, without whom we would not have all of our beautiful leaves and the blessings on them from our little ones and their families. Um, thank you to all three of you for your help in making that dream come alive. Um, and also for my dear friend Tom, whose presence here is a gift this morning. Uh, Tom is a friend from Jacksonville who we worked together at my last church, so it's nice to have him with us today. And he does have a beautiful voice. <laughs> um, and also, finally, to all of the parents and staff at the CCC, we are honored and privileged to have that relationship with all of you. Even if we don't see each other uh, on a daily basis, we know that that connection is strong and we give thanks to God for our extended family that extends into the CCC in the school day and into the families and beyond. So we are grateful for that as well.
We know that we hold so many things in our hearts as we go through our moments and our days. Some of those things we can articulate, some of them we cannot, some of them we don't even know because they belong to other people. But together we know that God will hear and hold all of our prayers if we but ask. And so let us go together to God in prayer now. Creator of the universe, you brought all things into being by your eternal word. You have blessed humankind in making us stewards of the earth. We pray for your world, that we may share and conserve its resources and live in reverence for the creation and in harmony with one another. You have given us a land of streams and springs, wheat and barley, vines and oil and honey. Yet there are still those who suffer the consequences of greed, selfishness, and fear. We pray for those who bear the weight of affliction, that they may come to share the life of wholeness and plenty. We pray for all those whose needs we lift up to you in word and silence today, and for all those whose needs and names are known only to you. For a dear friend of Ellen who is walking a journey with cancer, may she be surrounded by your healing love. And for the loss of her friend Freddie, may all who knew him be comforted in this time by your peace, and may we all be reminded that he dwells with you in spirit forever. We also pray with John for his sister Eleanor and the friend who passed away recently for their family to be comforted in this time of grieving. We pray with Mimi for Joey. In the joyful days and in the hard days, O oh God, we know that you are with him. Strengthen him, comfort him, and bring him your peace as he goes through his own health journey. And we give thanks for new friends in this space, for Tom and the beauty of his voice. We give thanks with Cindy for the joy of this day, for the children and the parents who are our friends and family and guests in our worship service this morning. We pray alongside Ruth for the people of Rwanda as they remember with grief the genocide that took so many lives 30 years ago. And we pray that you will restore in their hearts hope and love and faith in humanity for the future of their country. We give thanks with Annie for the joy that her friend is recovering well from surgery and that they will be able to see one another in person soon. And we also grieve alongside Carol and Julian for the loss of their dear friend, Eddie. We know any time that there is a sudden loss, oh God, it rips at our hearts and leaves us bewildered. And we pray that his family and his friends and all who knew him and loved him will be grounded in your steadying presence and know your healing, comforting spirit through these difficult days. O oh God, in Christ you call us to a new way of life, loving our neighbors before ourselves. Help us to treat with care and respect the world as it is, as we live in hope and anticipation of the world as it will be with your beloved community when it comes and your will is done. In your holy name we pray, amen. As our children are returning to worship, we know that it is time to celebrate the sacrament of communion. And here at Riviera, we practice an open communion table. That means that you don't need to be a member of Riviera or of any church to share in this sacramental meal. Communion is a tactile, sensory experience where we symbolically receive the meal that has been handed down to us from the ancient Hebrews at the Passover table and adapted by Jesus when he was with his disciples for the Last Supper. You are invited to participate in this communion meal in any way that feels right for your particular faith journey at this moment. Taste the love that we share together. We receive communion here at Riviera by intinction, which means that each person will come up one by one to the communion table. We will have three separate stations. One will have bread and white grape juice. One will have bread and red wine, 
and the center station on the silver platter will have gluten-free communion elements for anyone who needs them. As you come forward, you will take a piece of bread off of the common loaf, you will dip it into your chosen element for communion, and then you will partake in the communion meal as you return to your seats. We know that the scriptures tell us that people will come from every corner of the earth, from north and south, from east and west, to sit together at the table in the kingdom of God. You are all welcome at this table. Come now, for it has been made ready. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise, and good and joyous thing always and everywhere to give praise to our Creator in heaven and earth. You took the formless chaos swept across it with your mighty spirit and said, let there be light. And there was light. You separated the heavens and earth and brought forth trees and plants. You set sun, moon, and stars in the heavens and called forth fish and birds and all living creatures. You made us creatures of your own image to live in communion with you. We long for relationship with you, but in our humanness, we turn away. Yet you remain steadfast calling us again and again to turn to you. For your grace and for all your mercies toward us, we join your people on earth and in the company of heaven in proclaiming your praise, singing. O oh God, your spirit flowed through the life of Christ as he became the bridge for our reconciliation. In this time, we remember his life and his work. We remember your gift of baptism. We reflect on the mystery of the cross, and we dare to ponder resurrection and life eternal. Pour out your spirit on these, the gifts of your creation, grain and grapes, and us, your children. Make us see your touch in all creation, and let us bring your light into every darkened shadow. We pray all of these things in the name of Christ, our Redeemer, who lived as part of your creation and lives forever with you, saying together the prayer he taught us to pray using the words printed in our bulletin. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us Beloved, we remember that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, the last night he spent alive on earth, before his crucifixion, he shared the night and the meal with the people he loved the most. And after the meal was over, he took the bread from the table and he broke it apart. And he handed it to each one of them and he said, take and eat, for this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he also took the cup from the table and he poured it out before them. And he handed it to them saying, drink of it, all of you. For this cup is the new covenant that is sealed in my blood. 
poured out for all people for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Each time we eat this bread, each time we drink of this cup, we are proclaiming Christ's life, Christ's death, Christ's love, and Christ's glorious resurrection until he returns again. Will the communion servers please come forward? Has everyone received communion that wishes to receive it? Then let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for this meal that nourishes us in body and in spirit. By its nourishing power, may we take it and go back out into the world to share your love with all people, shining your light into every corner of your creation and being your partners 
in restoring the world. Amen. As we have shared together in this sacramental meal, let us now affirm what we believe using the words of the affirmation of faith that are printed in your bulletin. Let us say them together. We believe in God above us, creator of all things, sustainer of all life. We believe in Christ beside us, companion and friend, redeemer of all the broken pieces of our lives. We believe in spirit deep within us, advocate and guide, who lives with us eternally. We believe in God's resurrection, created world, where all things are restored and all creation fits together in vibrant harmonies. We believe in God above, beside, within, God yesterday, today, and forever, the three in one, the one in three, we believe in God. Amen. As God calls forth bounty from creation all around us, so God calls us to give abundantly in return for God's many gifts to us. Let us bring to God our tithes and offerings. Let us say together the unison prayer of dedication. All that we have, we give to you, O God. All that we are, we give to you, O God. All that we will be, we give to you, O God. May all of these gifts be a blessing to others. Amen. As the king of the clipboard, I just, it's not been, all right. I want to alert you to the clipboards that are in the back behind you as you walk out that way. Although today, you'll be walking this way to our luncheon, but you sign up for ushering and for the food pantry and to be a liturgist and to bring snacks that we put in the back on the other days when we're not doing first Sunday luncheon and communion service. You saw how easy that was. So all you have to do is sign up. And what better way to sign up than on a clipboard? Ellen. I have an interest in one clipboard, and especially it's the one where you sign up for the food pantry. And all you have to do on a Monday or a Wednesday from 9 to 12 is give out a bag of food 
and put together a bag of food according to the list that's hanging there. It's very simple. Three hours to yourself, no kids yelling at you, no telephones to answer if you don't want to answer, but helping the people that need food. We were really busy last month. We gave out 60 family bags. That is the most we've ever given out. And Lexi, thank you, Lexi. Where are you, Lexi? She's back there hiding. Lexi did Monday and Wednesday last week. She gave out 17 bags of food just this last week. So I have somebody from Monday. I would really like to have somebody come on Wednesday to do the uh, food pantry. Just sign up on the board. If you need some help, I will be very happy to walk you through. Thank you. The new class to help us work our way to support others who are in grief and loss. Using the book, Don't Sing Songs to a Heavy Heart, it'll begin soon after you get your food. Those of you who have signed up for the class, um, just go into the library adjacent to uh, the uh, lunch area. The classes will be April 7th, the 21st, May 5th, and 19th, and those start around 12 noon in the library. And this is for the first time. And I tell you what, I'm going to uh, make a judgment. You don't, if you didn't sign up for it and you think you might be interested, show up and, uh, and, and you'll be a part of it. And I, I know this is going to be good. Is it? Okay. So I just have a couple of brief announcements about the continuation of our season of creation. So this week marks the beginning, but it does not mark the end of the season. Each week from now through May 12th, we're going to be celebrating a different part of creation during our Sunday worship. And next week is especially exciting because we are celebrating the animals of creation with a blessing of the animals. So if you have an animal friend in your life that you want to bring to worship with you next week, you may do so. And it doesn't matter. They can be feathery, furry, scaly, hairy, um, you know, slippery, it doesn't matter. All kinds of animals are, um, are welcome to join us in worship. And if you can't bring your animal in the flesh, you can bring a picture or some other representation of your animal to be blessed as well. Our entire worship service next Sunday will be dedicated to the blessing of these animals, and we hope that you will join us. And even if you don't have a pet of your own, it's just fun to get to see all the other people's pets, and most of them are very friendly and will let you pet them. So join us next Sunday for the blessing of the animals and throughout the season of creation. And if you have not yet had a chance to decorate your own leaf or butterfly or bird or flower to hang on the rainbow tree, it is not too late. We still have all of those things for you to take home or decorate right now at the end of worship, and you can hang your own message on the rainbow tree anytime during the season of creation, and we hope that you will. Our closing hymn this Sunday is number 453. Open your ears, O faithful people. As you are able, stand in body or in spirit and sing together with us.
before we go on to brunch right after worship, so let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for all of the many hands and people who have made possible this meal for us to enjoy today. From those who picked and cultivated the food to those who cooked and prepared the meal, we are deeply, deeply grateful for every part of your creation that has brought us to this moment of generosity and gift. May we appreciate this meal, use the strength of it to nourish our bodies so that we might further your love and kingdom. Amen. The service is ended. May we all go in peace, and we'll see you at brunch in just a moment. <laughs>